Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. <laughs> I'm Ben and in this video we're going to look at an advanced grammatical structure which will be useful for your general English of course but it will be particularly useful for those of you who are studying for the C1 Advanced or C2 Proficiency Cambridge English exams or even those of you who are studying for the B2 First Cambridge English exam because, I, as I always say, grammar is grammar. Why not use advanced grammar in the B2 first exam? As long as you use it correctly, of course, you're going to get marks for it. But yeah, it is quite an advanced grammatical structure. And it's not only, but also. Okay, now, as I said, this is very useful for your exams, particularly the writing paper. Um, you, we can use it in spoken English, of course, but it's not that common, to be honest. It's much more common in written English. And there are two reasons why I wanted to look at this grammatical structure today. Um, first of all, as I said, it's very useful for the exams. Um, and examiners are really looking for sort of more sophisticated ways of linking ideas. And the other reason is that I've noticed that students tend to make mistakes when trying to use this structure. There's a, there's a lot to think about when using this structure in, in a sentence and students often just make one little mistake in one of the clauses which which is a pity because it's it's a nice structure to use and if you don't use it correctly you're not going to take it a full advantage of the marks that you could get. So how and when do we use not only but also? Well we use this structure when we want to emphasize two complementary things, two complementary aspects in a sentence. So that means that the two things we're referring to in the sentence must either be positive or the, they must both be negative. You can't have one positive thing and one negative thing. So as always, let's look at an example to, to get a better idea of how we use it. So not only is YouTube entertaining, but it is also educational. Here we have two adjectives, entertaining and educational. They're both referring to YouTube. They're both positive. Uh, so what we're really trying to do here is emphasize that YouTube is great, right? YouTube is fantastic. It's entertaining and educational. So you can just say that YouTube is educational and entertaining or entertaining and educational. But that's quite basic, first of all. And it's not really emphasizing how, how great you think YouTube is. Something very important to pay attention to with this structure is that you may have noticed we use inversion in the first clause. So not only is YouTube entertaining, so not only is YouTube, we wouldn't say not only YouTube is entertaining. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I've noticed my students make. Uh, they don't use the inversion structure in the first clause. Now, I've made a whole video about inversion, which you can check out. I'll link to it at the end of this video. So I won't go into too many details in this video, but I do recommend you watch that video just to to make sure you understand how we use inversion. And you should also make sure that you don't use inversion in the second clause. We don't use inversion in the second clause of this structure. That's another big mistake that I see my students making. I think they sometimes remember that they need to use inversion in this structure. So sometimes they use inversion in both clauses, they invert both clauses, or they use them in the wrong clauses. They use them in the second clause rather than the first clause. Um, or maybe they just don't use inversion at all. There are many things you can get wrong with this structure. So inversion for the first clause. You should also notice that in the second clause also appears after the verb, but not after but. So we can separate but and also in the second clause but we don't separate not only in the first clause. So yeah, there's a lot to think about, isn't there? So let's look at another example. Not only is exercise good for our physical well-being, but also our mental health. So if you look at those two clauses, you'll notice that in that second clause, there is no subject and no verb, right? Now it's possible, you could say, but it is also good for our mental health. That's possible, but it's a bit repetitive because we've used the same subject and the same verb in the first clause. So we generally don't do that. It just sounds redundant and unnecessary. Let's look at a third example now. Not only does investing in renewable energy reduce carbon emissions, but it also creates jobs. In this case, I really want to uh, emphasize the benefits of investing in renewable energies. So there are two positive 
aspects to investing in renewable energies. Uh, but you'll notice that in this example, we're not using the verb to be, which we did in the first two examples, uh, we're using the verb do. So the sentence begins here, not only does, um, and then it's followed by the gerund, so investing. So not only does investing. So that's just the structure you need to use, but it's still inverted, of course. And of course, there are other auxiliary verbs we can use um, in this structure. So look at this example. Not only have they broken the vase, but they've also spilt wine on the carpet. Okay, so not only have they broken, have they broken. So this is a present perfect uh, structure. So we need the auxiliary have. Um, and in the second clause, but they've also spilt wine on the carpet. So here we have two negative things that have happened. It must be at someone's party um, and they've broken the vase and they've spilt wine on the carpet. So this sentence is really emphasizing the negative situations here. Two negative things have happened. So uh, they're complementary and negative, but they're complementary. Now, if the two disasters that happened were both about things being broken, then we wouldn't need to repeat the, the verb and the subject. So imagine they've broken a vase and a mirror, for example. The example would look like this. Not only have they broken the vase, but also the mirror. So as you can see, it's the same action. They're breaking something, they've broken the vase, they've broken the mirror. So we don't need to repeat, it's obvious. It's the same people and the same action, so it's unnecessary. One more very important thing you must remember about this structure, not only but also, is if you use a verb in the present simple, in the first clause, then you have to use the same verb tense in the second clause. Or if you're using the present perfect in the first clause, you must use present perfect in the second clause. And this is called parallelism. Parallelism is quite difficult to say. So if you think of parallel lines, the main characteristic of par parallel lines is that they always have the same or the equal distance between them. And that's the same idea for this grammatical structure, that they are similar in some ways. So if you use the present simple in the first clause, you must use the present simple in the second clause. If you use the past simple in the first clause, you must use the past simple in the second clause. And also, of course, if you use positive adjective in the first clause, you must use a positive adjective in the second clause. And you must also use the same part of speech. Now, that's probably quite logical and quite obvious, but going back to that first example, not only is YouTube entertaining, but it is also educational. Uh, you have two adjectives there, two positive adjectives. You can't use an adjective and a verb. Uh, again, it would be pretty obvious, I think, when you're constructing the sentence. It would just sound quite strange. So, as I said, there is a lot to think about, so it's probably a good idea just to, to review the six main points that we've looked at in this video. So we use this structure, not only but also, to emphasize two complementary things uh, in a sentence. Uh, so either they're both positive or both negative. We must invert the subject and the main verb in the first clause, but not the second clause. We do not separate not only, but we can separate, but also by placing also after the verb in the second clause. Uh, we use the verb do if we're not using the verb to be or an auxiliary verb. We need to think carefully about whether we need to repeat the subject and the verb in the second clause or not, whether it, it's unnecessary, whether that would be redundant. And finally, we need to make sure that the two clauses are parallel. Okay, so I hope you have a better idea of how to use this structure now. Make sure you practice it. Come up with your own examples, as always. Share them in the comments if you like. Um, and I'll see you very soon for another video.